Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome back to Aircraft Structures 1 course. Uh, this is Professor Anup Ghosh from Aerospace Engineering Department IIT Kharagpur. Uh, in due process, we have come to the last lecture of the total course. The eighth week is going to end with this lecture, the 42nd lecture in sequence. And here we will uh, have some understanding, we will follow or put some insight into the membrane analogy for the torsion problem and we will end the course. But before we end the course, it is uh, we, we go into the lectures, it is my duty to thank uh, many people who has helped me uh, from the audio visual section of IIT Kharagpur who has helped me to record this lecture in a very, very well beautifully record this lecture beautifully and uh, presentable to everyone. Uh, my sincere thank to our departmental professor retired uh, professor P. K. Datta. Without his help uh, probably it was a very difficult task for me to do it. I also would like to thank uh, my two students who will be um, who will be um, teaching assistant in this course. Uh, uh, Mr. Bikash Kaushik as well as Mr. Shupen Shah. Without their help also it is not a possible task. Uh, not only that, there are many other uh, people who are involved from CET section uh, of our institute. I would like to thank each and everybody and with that uh, note, uh, I would like to start today's lecture uh, which is the final lecture. So, let us proceed. So, in this uh, recapitulation slide, what we see is uh, that history of aircraft and aerospace structural analysis we have discussed. We have also discussed various types of external loads, conceptual structural details, uh, how a wing is fabricated, what are the members, structural members, how does a rib looks like, how does a spar looks like how thin wall sections are used to, to fabricate those things. And uh, we have seen where from loads uh, come to aircraft and it experiences different critical conditions. We have come across to the flight envelope. We have also seen that uh, if we consider the fuselage separately or the wing separately, how does it bends? how does it experience shear force, it changes. We have done uh, unit load analysis method so that uh, for any practical case it can be achieved that particular value. Then uh, three dimensional structures are given stress uh, with as example which is very common in aircraft without uh, which uh, an aircraft cannot Land, landing is very, very important. Uh, so, landing gear analysis with help of three dimensional structures. Flying is a tough job fine, but unless we are able to land, it is of no use. So, landing gear analysis we have done. And then we have uh, done various methods to find out deflection. You are given the concept to find out deflection. We have covered methods like complementary energy method, method, total potential energy method. We have learned Castiglianos theorem, we have learned unit load method, uh, dummy load method. We have also learned how to solve uh, indeterminate structures, statically indeterminate structures if there are more like the propped cantilever. That is a very common example. Not only that, uh, even a truss with more members are also solved. 
then we got introduced to, to a very very important method known as the Rayleigh Ridge method of analysis which lays the foundation stone probably for the numerical analysis world from where probably it starts and it goes further and the world is now running in computer in digital world uh, unless we have a computer unless we are able to solve we 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 cannot design anything we need to find solution but uh, see even the there is computer there are advanced methods of analysis like finite element analysis method or many other de uh, different methods to analyze structures unless we have the insight into the development of stresses and uh, deflections it is difficult to design uh, so to have that insight to have the feel of development of stresses and strains and displacements we need to learn the theory of elasticity and in that connection we have uh, learned theory of elasticity we have learned that uh, there are compatibility conditions, compatibility or continuity of stresses and strains while we are formulating a problem we need to maintain mathematically otherwise it will not going to represent uh, the stress strain uh, with the physical matching with the physical world or the practical world. So, those things we have learned we have solved very very typical problem of circular hole in a plate. Then we have solved uh, torsion problem got introduced with the phenomena known as warping. It is a very beautiful phenomena to observe you may think of experiments wherever you are in, in your college you may ask for a torsion experiment it is not very difficult one. But before you go for the torsion element a, a torsion experiment you should mark parallel lines so that you can observe the warping after the break of tor by torsion. And then uh, in the last lecture we got introduced with the membrane analogy and uh, we will continue with the membrane analogy to find out torsional stresses and deflections. So, in that connection we come to the relation between the stress and theta with respect to membrane. So, in this we are considering again one stretched membrane which is under pressure P. The stretched member is stretched on the surrounding or the edges of the structure which is under torsion. If we consider the equilibrium equation of any portion of the membrane taken along a contour line, the following equation results. So, what we can get from these equations along a contour line is that S sin alpha, sin alpha is equals to dz dn. Uh, integrate it along a contour line which is uh, the I have shown you in the last lecture. We can easily write that this is equals to integration over that contour line for d s length considering a, a small length d s is this one and that d z d n is equals to tau the slope already we have put and since we have found out a relation between this p by s equals to 2 g j sorry 2 g theta that if we substitute here we finally see that uh, that whatever the pressure that total pressure is equals to p into a the total force acting in this direction and uh, once we complete the integration we get the relation something like tau ds integration over the s tau ds is equals to 2 g a theta and uh, where ds is an increment of the distance s measured along the contour line. So, with that concept we move further for practical cases how do we implement this membrane analogy. For solid and hollow circular sections the membranes would be as indicated in the figure below. Since the membrane for the solid circular section has axial symmetry the membrane for the removed portion of the hollow section is a circular membrane shown dotted in the figure this one 
and torsional properties of the remaining hollow cylinder are given by the dark membrane outline of the same figure. So, this, this will govern the torsional property, this membrane. So, with that note we move further for a solid section this is the way this total membrane for a uh, annular section where there is a hole axial hole cut in the shaft. Uh, this portion of the th section we are supposed to consider for thin wall let us see what is the relation we get with respect to theta. It can be readily be seen from seen why the removal of the center portion of solid rod does not remove any considerable part of the torsional stiffness of the section. So, if the wall comes thin we have the section as shown where the portion of the membrane presenting the wall can be assumed to have a constant slope this 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 particular portion. So, that tau may be equated with that slope value that tau is a so since from the equation T equals to twice the volume under the membrane what we can see that uh, the volume under the membrane is this height and h a multiplied by h t twice a multiplied by h and uh, t is equals to uh, h by t as we, we can see this is the slope and then if we substitute the value of h here we get that t is equals to twice a t tau. So, with that note we come to the relation as tau is equals to t by twice a t. Using the stress equations we find the angular twist for constant value of t and theta may be written as integration tau ds to g a or this may be again from the relations whatever we have seen may be written as t s by a 4 a square g t. So, in this equation s is the perimeter of the cross section and a is the a is the average area enclosed by the cross section wall the membrane method uh, so membrane method clearly shows the great difference in torsional stiffness between a completely closed thin wall cylinder completely closed and thin wall cylinder and and a cylinder that has been cut. Figure above these are the two examples we are considering the to discuss with membrane analogy and how the torsion uh, re torsional resistance varies that we will try to discuss. In the first cylinder the value of phi on the outer boundary is equal to 0 but the value of phi on the inner boundary is some constant value different from 0 this boundary. So, this is not equals to 0 if we put some internal pressure. So, the membrane as we have discussed in the last slide membrane is something like this. So, so that is the reason we have some definite value here. Since the resistance to a torsional moment is proportional to the volume V under the membrane here V1, this resistance is indicated by the shaded area shown as V1. So, we are supposed to find out this volume for this closed ring. So, what happens if it is not a closed ring? So, in case of cut ring, considering now the cut cylinder we see that there is only one surface to this member there is one surface to this member and that phi equals to 0. So, this total edge if we look at starting from here to here it is a complete single edge and there phi is equals to 0 on both the sides of the and the outside of the both, both inside and outside of the cylinder. Thus, the volume representing the torque resistance is that of the small volume V 2 this volume 
this volume covering this area. It is therefore quite apparent that even the smallest cut in such a member reduce its torsional stiffness to a point where it is essentially equal to the torsional stiffness of the thin plate with a thickness equal to the cylinder wall thickness and width equal to the perimeter of the cylinder. So, it is saying that if we stretch it, it is becoming almost similar case a thin wall section and with that scenario the the capability to resist torsion reduces in great way. So, that is what from the membrane analogy we can easily conclude and keeping in mind that analogy we also conclude that the if we are able to find out j effective separately for these sections which makes the C section A 1 is this one, A 2 is this one and A 3 is this one. Then we can easily have a summation of those j effectives to find out the j effective for the total C section. Thus, for any thin wall section open section it is approximately correct to say that the torsional stiffness is equal to the torsional stiffness of its elements considered as flat plate under torsion. So, with that concept uh, it, it gives us some approximate method of analysis that helps a lot uh, that helps a lot for the initial iteration. And with that note uh, we move to the next slide. We will try to find out solution for a very easy problem. The equations for a long rectangular rectangle can easily be obtained by a consideration of the membrane analogy if in figure above h is very very greater than b in this figure is talked about the membrane can be considered a cylindrical surface. Cylindrical surface one to many if we if we look from this side this becomes something like this. Uh, there will be changes definitely at this corner, this corner, this corner and this corner, but we can easily neglect that part since we are going for the approximate analysis. So, that cylindrical surface we will get since the effects of the ends on the volume enclosed under the membrane will be very small as these corners as we said we can easily consider this, uh, that as a cylinder and if we do that for a cylindrical surface what is mentioned here this is the cylinder this cylinder is talked about. For a cylindrical membrane loaded with a tension force S and a normal pressure P the deflection is given by delta equals to P B square by 8 S. This is a standard value what we are using we are not going to derive this and the maximum slope is alpha equals to twice delta by b by 2 and which leads to p b by twice s. So, we the volume under the membrane is uh, equal to v uh, two third of b delta h and we have this value 1 by 12 p b k by h by s. But uh, since we have the relation p by s equals to 2 g theta and t equals to twice v, if we combine those two we get the equation t is equals to 1 third h b cube g theta and the tau max which is equals to alpha and if we substitute the values whatever we have observed here is equals to t by 1 third h b square and theta from the membranology theta or the rotation for unit length per unit length is given by T by 1 third H B Q G. The effective polar moment of inertia J effective is equals to 1 third H B Q as it is obtained in this relation. In is very small compared to the true polar moment of inertia of the section which is H B cube plus H cube B divided by 12. So, there is a big difference as the section becomes more thin it becomes uh, less in value and uh, as the it is less in value it, it shows 
more uh, theta. So, in this connection we, we go further uh, in the case discussed so far the equation of the membrane may be determined analytically. In more general cases experimental methods may be used in which a hole shaped like the cross section of the cylindrical bar to be considered is cut in the plate a show film or thin highly stretched rubber film is placed over the hole and then subjected to a known normal pressure. The shape of the membrane surface is determined either by mechanical probes or by optical methods. If only relative values are wanted, they may be obtained by using a circular hole with the same membrane and the same internal pressure. Since the value of the circle are known, the value of the unknown cross section can be determined by comparison. So, with this note, we come to the membrane analogy method and uh, we come to the end of our course aircraft structures 1. And uh, moving further, we see the usual slide what consisting of the reference books. And uh, with this note, uh, we would like to say I would like to thank you for attending the course and hope uh, it will help you a lot to understand the subject well and to move further in academic world as well as in the physical design or engineering world whatever uh, we call it and it will be helpful for your career. Thank you for attending the course. Thank you.